Welcome to lecture 11. In this lecture, we're going to build upon the results of last lecture a little bit more. If you recall, last lecture we developed expressions for the volumetric flow rate and for the velocity profile of a Bingham fluid in pipe flow. Now, if you recall, a Bingham fluid was one that exhibited a yield stress and then a linear relationship with shear rate thereafter, so it's yield stress plus Newtonian. In presenting the results for velocity profile and for volumetric flow rate, we use normalised radius and an average velocity, effectively a normalisation as well. And the rationale for this was because it was easy to present results on the same graph for differing materials, because all the expressions become scaled together. What we're going to do this lecture is examine the use of these expressions a little bit further. Firstly, we're going to have a look at the viscosity as a function of shear rate behaviour for a Bingham fluid in pipe flow. We'll see that there are some circumstances where the result overpoweringly becomes close to the Newtonian result, but also we will see that there are circumstances where it diverges significantly away from the Newtonian result. What we will then do is use this viscosity information to examine something of great importance to the chemical engineer, which is that of pipe flow pressure drop. We will develop friction factor expressions, and we will realise that there's a subtlety within Bingham friction factor expressions that we really need to address. I'll give you a hint. They're actually implicit rather than explicit. We will then see how to calculate the pressure drop of a laminar flow, and we will also explore where the limit of laminar flow lies with the transition to turbulent behaviour. So, what we will do to start with is to remind ourselves of the mean velocity expression for a Bingham fluid. This is a result that we derived last time. The mean velocity, um, is a function of my wall shear stress. Remember that is my datum point in a pipe flow to evaluate the shear stress or the shear rate. The pipe radius, big R, the Bingham viscosity, mu B, and then a group of terms that involve the non-dimensional critical radius, RC star. Now, remember that the critical radius, RC, is the radius of the unyielded section of the flow. Remember that in most pipe flows, you would expect there to be an unyielded section near the core, and then a flowing annulus of material, because... As you reach the pipe wall, the shear rate increases, hence the shear stress increases, hence you're more likely to have exceeded the yield stress of the material. So the mean velocity is a group of terms involving some rheology. You've got mu b there, you've got the wall shear rate, you've got the pipe geometry, and then this group of terms involving our C star. So what we're aiming for is a viscosity description. Now, we have an expression here from which we could write the wall shear stress, tau w, so all we need is to divide that by an expression for the wall shear rate, gamma dot w. That will give us apparent viscosity, tau w over gamma dot w. So, if we do that, we can arrive at a result. Let me just explain how we got to that result. The wall shear rate expression we're using is that for Newtonian fluid. So this is an assumption up front, but we know that once yielded, a Bingham fluid flows with the Newtonian behaviour. If you recall from several lectures ago, gamma dot w is 4q, q is the volumetric flow rate, over pi r cubed, where r again is the pipe radius. We also know, because of our definition of what mean velocity is, it's volumetric flow rate over area, we can write the wall shear rate in terms of the mean velocity for um over r. So luckily we have an expression at the top of the blackboard involving both um and tau w, so a little bit of rearrangement gives us the result that we see there in orange. So my apparent viscosity is the, new t is the Bingham viscosity mu b divided by a group of terms that involve my core radius rc star. So what we're going to do is to look at when my apparent viscosity approaches a Newtonian and when it doesn't. Now hopefully you can see from that expression that when RC star is very small, that means that the apparent viscosity approaches a Newtonian viscosity, mu. Okay, so at very high shear rates, we've effectively got an entirely yielded material. 
and once yielded the material flows of the Newtonian behaviour, so we would expect this result. Now, let's think about otherwise. As RC star tends to 1, gamma dot w, the wall shear rate, tends to 0, and we end up in the denominator there with an expression that sends my apparent viscosity off to infinity. So what this is saying is that effectively we have a solid, which is the analogous expression of saying we have an unyielded material. OK, so the apparent viscosity results for a Bingham fluid in pipe flow are, as one would expect, we have a flow regime where the apparent viscosity approaches Newtonian and a flow regime where the viscosity diverges to become near infinite. So let's examine pressure drop. Now, hopefully you'll remember from other courses that in laminar flow, we have an expression for a friction factor, CF, and that is a ratio between the wall shear stress, tau w, divided by a half rho v squared. Now, v here is my mean velocity, and so that, in laminar flow, is 16 divided by my Reynolds number. And if you recall, if we can work out Reynolds number, we can work out my friction factor, and then we know that my pressure drop delta P is 4CF L over D times a half rho V squared. So, let's develop this analysis for a Bingham fluid. Now, on the previous slide, we saw that we had an expression for my mean velocity, um, which also involved tau w. So this result in white on the board is just a rearrangement of that expression in terms now of my wall shear stress tau w. So what I'm now going to do is divide this result by half rho um squared. Um appears in the numerator, so that term will cancel and we'll have a term of um in the denominator. So here we have on the board, on the left hand side, my expression for friction factor, tau w over half rho um squared. On the right hand side, I have the expression for what that would be equal to in a Bingham fluid. So let's do a little bit of tidying, a little bit of rearranging, and we can see that if we recognise that a Bingham Reynolds number exists, and I've written Bingham Reynolds number down there on the board, it's rho um d over Bingham viscosity mu b. What we see is we can have a result that involves 16 over Bingham's Reynolds number multiplied by a term involving core radius. And core radius, if you remember, is related to yield stress. And that we can see as my core radius shrinks to zero, we get CF is 16 over Bingham's Reynolds number. And RC shrinking to zero gave us Newtonian result for apparent viscosity on the previous slide. So this is good news. So we have a friction factor expression that behaves in the limit of small rc star as we would hope it would do, returning the Newtonian result. So there we have it. My friction factor CF is 16 over Bingham Reynolds number multiplied by a group of terms that will involve the, shear sh the yield stress. There's a subtlety, however. Let's just remind ourselves what RC star is actually equal to. RC star was the normalised core radius RC over R. Now remember, we always had the ability to swap between expressions involving R and expressions involving tau. That came out of one of the very first analyses of capillary flow many lectures ago. So if we remember that, we can see that RC star is RC over R, which is tau y over tau w. And of course, we can re re rewrite tau w in terms of my friction factor CF, which is a problem because once we recognise that RC star when rearranged can be rewritten in terms of CF, what we have is an implicit expression for friction factor. And if we look at the denominator, we'll see there are higher order terms there, which will make an analytical expression quite hard to find. So we have to iterate to a solution if we're to find CF for an arbitrary flow. Now, however, there are some caveats. If our C star is small, and if we can ignore that fourth power in the denominator, then what we can do is rewrite that CF expression 
in the limit of small RC star. Not RC star equals zero, we know that's the Newtonian result, but RC star is small, so effectively those fourth order terms don't add anything significant to that denominator. And what we end up with is a simplified version of my friction factor that involves a new non-dimensional group. I'm not going to present the derivation for this. I'll let you work that out, but I will give you a hint how we got there. So my friction factor CF for small rc star is 16 over Reynolds number, 1 plus Bn. Bn is the Bingham number. Bingham number over 6. Now, let's have a look what the Bingham number is. The Bingham number is the ratio of my yield stress to my viscous stress. I've written it in terms of both a Bingham fluid and a herschel bulkley fluid. Note they are different. And if we think about where the expression in orange and pink has come from, and we remember that RC star relates to tau y and to tau w, and the Bingham number is written as tau y divided by a group of terms that look very much like a Bingham's Reynolds number, then perhaps we can see how we get from the expression involving RC star via tau y. CF is involved with the RC star. CF is 16 over Bingham's Reynolds number. So pop that in. And then hopefully what we find is this expression drops out. So if RC star is small, CF is 16 over Bingham's Reynolds number, 1 plus Bingham number over 6. OK. So... This discussion so far has focused on laminar flow. We need to know, as an engineer, where that laminar flow regime stops and where we get flow transition into turbulent flow. Now, we can write an expression down actually in terms of the Bingham number for the flow transition. I've written it there on the board. It's not exactly a compact notation but it involves a quantity which is Rb. Now Rb is a critical core radius at which the flow transition happens. Okay, so Rb star is Rb normalised, Rb over pipe radius big R. So in order to evaluate that expression, we really need to know what Rb star is. Luckily, however, there is another way of working out Rb star. This involves yet another non-dimensional number, the Hedstrom number. And the Hedstrom number is simply defined as a product of Bingham Reynolds number multiplied by the Bingham number. Now, when you work an expression for that out, we have Rb over 1 minus Rb cubed. So that is equal to my Hedstrom number. And the transition is Hedstrom number over 16,800. So what we see from this expression is that we only have material terms, tau y and mu b, and geometric terms. We have my pipe diameter there. So if I know my pipe diameter, if I know my material parameters, I can work out my Hedstrom number independent of what the flow actually is. So then I can say, well, I know my Hedstrom number for this material. I can work out Rb star. Knowing Rb star, I can then work out my Bingham number. And I can figure out what that flow transition is. And because Bingham number involves mean velocity, I can then work out what my flow velocity would be for that transition. Let's summarise this workflow. The first thing is to find the Hedstrom number. Remember, it's just a function of the material and the geometry. The second is to use a Hedstrom number over 16,800 to find Rb star. And third is, knowing Rb star, find the Bingham number from that top expression, and then hence the mean velocity, and then you've worked out what your flow transition is. OK, there will be a worked example for this in the next part of this lecture. Now, it's very convenient to actually plot this information graphically. If we look at this, we've got Hedstrom number as a function of Rb star. We have Bingham number as a function of Rb star. So what we can do is produce a plot as follows. On the primary y-axis, we have the Reynolds number. On the x-axis, we have the Hedstrom number. On the secondary y-axis, we have the Bingham number. All these relate together via Rb star. So what we can do 
is use the x-axis, the hedgestrom number, to say this is my hedgestrom number for the pipe flow and the material parameters I've got. And then I can use the green curve to say this is a big number it corresponds to, which is very, very useful. So we're going to do a worked example of this in a second. So some key points here. We've seen in terms of apparent viscosity for, for small RC stars, small, small normalized core radius, my apparent viscosity approaches that of Newtonian. But for large RC star, my apparent viscosity diverges to infinite. And this corresponds to fully yielded flow and unyielded flow. We developed friction factor expressions and we found that in laminar flow we have something new which is an implicit friction factor expression. We also found that if we make some assumptions about how big RC star is we can simplify higher order terms as in ignore them and produce an explicit expression for friction factor. We also briefly examined the limit of laminar flow. We need to know when we can ap apply those friction factor expressions and when we have to look in the literature for something else. And so we looked at the laminar turbulent flow transition in terms of another new non-dimensional number, that of the Hedstrom number.